Hi. In this session, we're going to be learning a little bit about instruments of the orchestra, which is one of the new topics for grade four theory, but it may be something that you're interested in anyway. Now, I'm going to start by not talking about instruments of the orchestra, but by talking about voices and voices that you might meet in a choir. And then you'll see how this relates to what we're going to say about instruments of the orchestra. Now, if you sing in a choir, the highest voice is called the soprano. And the next voice down from the top is called the alto. These are often the ladies in the choir. If you have boys singing a soprano line, they're sometimes called trebles. Ladies singing the alto line are sometimes called contraltos, but you can have male altos as well. But these are the general terms. So the highest voice is the soprano, and the next voice down is the alto. And then we come to the two parts that are normally sung by the men. And the next one down is the tenor. And then the voice at the bottom of the choir is the bass. So, generally speaking, that's how it works in a choir. You've got four voices. The highest people are the sopranos, the next highest, the altos, then the tenors, and then the basses at the bottom. And I think this is a helpful way to think about instruments of the orchestra. And hopefully you'll see what I mean in just a moment. Now, the instruments in the orchestra are members of different families. So the first family we're going to think about is the string family. So let's think about string instruments for just a moment. Now you can probably think of quite a number of string instruments like guitars. You might even think that the piano is a string instrument. It's got strings in it, isn't it? But we're going to talk about what we call the standard orchestral instruments, the main instruments that you meet in the orchestra, because some instruments are sort of there by invitation. Instruments like the guitar are not normally in the orchestra. A composer can write in a guitar part if they want to, but normally the guitar's not there. Sometimes the harp is added in the orchestra, maybe sometimes the piano's added as well, but they're not what we call standard orchestral instruments. So here come the standard ones. Now, the highest member of the string family is the violin. So there's the violin, and the violin plays in the treble clef. Obviously, in the orchestra, <coughs> you might have noticed that there are often two violin parts. There's a violin one part and a violin two part. But that top instrument is always the violin. The next instrument down is the viola. So the viola is kind of like the altos in the choir. If the violins are like the sopranos, the next one down is the viola, like the altos. Now, the viola actually plays in the alto clef. <clears throat> so that's a clef that we've learned about in another lesson for grade four. Um, the alto clef isn't such a common clef, and many people might not be very familiar with it, but if you play the viola, you'll play in the alto clef all of the time. There are other occasions when we sometimes use the alto clef, and if you play the trombone in the orchestra, sometimes the first trombone would use the alto clef. We'll come back to that later. But the violas always play in the alto clef, so you can soon spot them in a score, if you're looking at it, where you see the alto clef in the string section. The next instrument down is the cello. So the cello is like the tenors in the choir. Violins like the sopranos, violas like the altos, cellos like the tenors. Now the cello actually uses three clefs. Quite a lot of the time, the cello is in the bass clef, 
When the cello goes higher, it goes into the tenor clef. And we'll be learning more about the tenor clef when we come to do grade five theory. You can see it's the same as the alto clef, but it's put in a different place on the stage. So more about that later. The cello uses the bass clef and the tenor clef, and when the cello goes very high, it goes into the treble clef. So if you're a cellist, you need to know about three clefs. Then at the bottom, the equivalent of the basses in the choir, we have this instrument called the double bass. And the double bass plays in the bass clef. Now, one thing to notice about the double bass is that because it's such a low instrument, when the double bass players read their music, they're actually sounding notes that are one octave below the notes that they're reading. All these other three string players are reading notes at exactly the pitch that they're sounding. But in the case of the double bass, it's all sounding an octave lower. The reason for that is the notes are so low that if you wrote them at the right pitch, you'd be writing loads of ledger lines below the stave and that would make it difficult to read. So if we write the notes an octave higher, they're much easier to read. It just happens to sound an octave lower. So there is the standard string family. Violins for the sopranos, violas for the altos, cellos for the tenors, double bass for the bass. One question that sometimes comes up on a theory paper that's worth covering at this point is the question, um, which instruments do you expect to find in a standard string quartet? Lots of composers have written string quartets. And it's very tempting to think, ah, quartet, that's four. There are four instruments, so it must be violin, viola, cello, double bass. Actually, it's a slightly trick question because in a string quartet, we normally have violin one, violin two, viola, cello. Violin one, violin two, viola, cello. So that's the string quartet. But that, that's the string family, the standard instruments that we expect to find in the orchestra. So having dealt with the strings, let's now think about the brass family. So here they come, here are the brass family. Now again, there are all sorts of brass instruments that we don't normally find in the orchestra unless a composer's decided to write a special part for them. There are quite a lot of brass instruments that we find in the brass band that we don't find in the orchestra like the cornet, or the tenor horn, or the euphonium, or the baritone. These are all brass instruments that are not what we call standard orchestral instruments. So again, we're focusing on the standard orchestral instruments. So at the top, in the place of the sopranos, we have the trumpet. And the trumpet players will be reading in the treble clef. Now one thing to notice about the trumpet is that the trumpet is called a transposing instrument. This is a slightly confusing business, but what it really means is that the trumpet doesn't always sound the notes that the player is reading. Doesn't that sound confusing? If we have a trumpet in C, then that makes life easier because when you have a trumpet in C, it means that when the player reads a C, actually reading this note C, what's coming out of the end of their instrument is that note C. But quite often we have trumpets in B flat. And what that means is that when the trumpet player reads this note C, you know, he or she is looking at that note C in the music, but what's coming out of the end of the instrument is this note, B flat. That's what it means to play a trumpet in B flat. You read C, but it sounds B flat. And that means that if you're playing trumpet in B flat, all of your notes have to be written up a major second because there's a major second between C and B flat. So the trumpet is called a transposing instrument. Okay, let's move on. Now, what's the alto instrument in the brass family? Well, it's called the horn or 
It's sometimes called the French horn. And French horn players sometimes read in the treble clef and they sometimes read in the bass clef, depending on how high or low their part is. And the French horn is another transposing instrument. It's sometimes called the horn in F. And what that means, wait for this one, if you thought the trumpet was complicated enough, what it means for the horn in F is this. Say our horn player is reading the note C, there's middle C, actually even though they're reading the note C, what's coming out of the end of that horn is F. And that's a perfect fifth below the note that they're reading, a perfect fifth away. So in the case of a horn player, they have to have a part that's written a perfect fifth above the notes that we want to hear. So the French horn is another transposing instrument. Now the French horn is always in F, so it's always a perfect fifth away. The trumpet can vary because we get trumpets in C, we get trumpets in B flat, we sometimes even have a trumpet in A. So the trumpet player is reading a C, but what's coming out of the end of the trumpet in A is A, a minor third below. The French horn always plays in F, but they're both transposing instruments because they don't necessarily sound at the pitch that they're reading. Soprano, alto. So who's the tenor in the brass family? Well, it's the trombone. So here comes the trombone. Now you might be relieved to know that in the orchestra, the trombone is a non-transposing instrument. In other words, it plays at what we call concert pitch. And that simply means that if you're reading a C, what's coming out of the end of your instrument is C. So that's nice and simple, isn't it, after all this stuff. So the trombone's a non-transposing instrument. It often plays in the bass clef. So in the orchestra, you quite often have trombone parts all in the bass clef. Sometimes you'll have three trombones in the orchestra. The third trombone will read in the bass clef. The second trombone will read in the tenor clef. And the first trombone at the top will read in the alto clef. So if you're a trombonist in the orchestra, it's pretty useful to know your bass clef, but also to know your tenor clef and your alto clef. Now the bass instrument in the brass family is the tuba. The tuba goes right at the bottom and the tuba is playing in the bass clef. And the tuba can also come in a number of different keys. So even though you can have a tuba in C, which would be a non-transposing situation. Tubas in E flat and in other keys are again transposing instruments. So if you have a tuba in E flat, the tuba might read this C, and actually the note that's coming out of the end of the tuba is this E flat, a whole major six below. So the tuba can be another transposing instrument. Trumpet, French horn, trombone, tuba. Soprano, alto, tenor, bass. So that's a bit about the brass family and the standard orchestral instruments that belong there. Let's move on now and talk about the wind family, sometimes called the woodwind, uh, sometimes called the wind. So let's think about them. Now the soprano instrument is the flute. And you'll be relieved to hear that the flute is a non-transposing instrument. So it plays at concert pitch. If it reads a C, it sounds a C. So that's helpful, isn't it? And the flute reads in the treble clef. So nothing too complicated about that. One thing that's worth knowing about the flute is that the bottom note it can play is middle C. The reason I mention that is that you might want to write a melody for a flute and you need to remember that the bottom note is 
middle C and it can be tempting to write notes for a flute that are below middle C but that would be impossible to do. So one thing to remember about the flute there. Now the alto instrument here is the oboe and the oboe also reads in the treble clef and it's a non-transposing instrument so it plays at concert pitch. When the oboist reads a C the note that sounds is a C, so that's a helpful thing. The tenor instrument is the clarinet. And the clarinet also plays in the treble clef. Might be worth talking about bottom notes again. The bottom note of the oboe is B flat, one below middle C. So the flute goes down to middle C and the oboe goes down to B flat down there. The clarinet, reading in the treble clef, is another transposing instrument. Sometimes the clarinet's in B flat, that's the most common situation, though sometimes the clarinet's in A. So just as we were talking about the trumpets, if a clarinetist were to read C and they were playing a clarinet in B flat, the note that would actually sound is B flat, a major second below. And if you were playing a clarinet in A, you might be reading C, and the note that sounds is A, a minor third below. So there's the clarinet, a transposing instrument. Now, you don't have to worry too much about the bottom note of the clarinet because it can go all the way down to D, below middle C. You just have to be a little bit careful because if it's a clarinet in B flat, then of course the lowest written note you can put is E, because if you read an E, it's going to sound D. But it's quite low, the clarinet, really, so you're going on to ledger lines below the treble clef. You're far less likely to run off the bottom of the range of the clarinet than you might be with the flute or the oboe. Now, the bass instrument in the wind family is the bassoon. So here comes the bassoon at the bottom, and the bassoon will quite often play in the bass clef. But, like the cello, when it goes higher, it will go into the tenor clef quite often. And if it goes really high, it will go into the treble clef. And the bassoon is a non-transposing instrument, so it sounds the notes that it's actually playing. Another thing to think about with these wind players is the flute doesn't have a reed. It has a, a hole in the top joint and you blow across the hole to make a sound. The clarinet has what's called a single reed. It's just one piece of reed that vibrates against the mouthpiece of the clarinet and that's how it produces a sound. The oboe and the bassoon are double reed instruments. So they don't really have a mouthpiece like the, like the clarinet does, for example. You just have two pieces of reed at the top that vibrate against each other to produce a sound. So the oboe and the bassoon are double reed instruments, the clarinet is a single reed instrument, and the flute doesn't have a reed at all. Now, one more thing just to investigate when we're thinking about the wind family, or the woodwind family, and that is that each of these instruments has a kind of partner. So the flute has a partner, and that's called the piccolo. So the piccolo is just like a kind of baby flute. You'll notice if you see one that it just looks like a much smaller flute. And the thing to note about the piccolo, it's sort of like the opposite of the double bass. Because remember we said the double bass actually sounds an octave below the notes that it reads. Well the piccolo sounds an octave above the notes that it reads. And again for the same reason. If you wrote the piccolo notes at the pitch that they actually sound, you'd be writing on loads of ledger lines above the treble clef. So it's easier to have the notes where you can work out what they are fairly quickly inside the stave, but just to have them sounding an octave up. So that's how it works for the piccolo. The oboe has a partner called the cor anglais. And I must admit, I've always found this a rather strange thing, that cor anglais is French for 
English horn. So why would you call it an English horn in French? And especially if you remember when we were talking about the brass instruments, we called one of those instruments a French horn uh, in English. Very confusing, but there we are. Um, the corps anglais is a kind of big brother or big sister of the oboe. It's another double reed instrument that makes the same sound as an oboe, has a double reed as well, um, but it plays a bit lower, has a kind of slightly deeper, lovely, rich sound. And you'll see in a corps anglais, it just looks bigger than an oboe. It has a bit more of a bell at the bottom and it has the, the double reed attached to something that's sort of just a little bit bent at the top rather than the oboe that's just straight into the top of the instrument. So you can soon spot a corps anglais. The clarinet has a relative called the bass clarinet. Makes the same sound as the clarinet and has a single reed but plays lower. So there's the bass clarinet. And the bassoon also has a large relative called the double bassoon, or you can call it the contra bassoon. And that's a very low sounding instrument, which again, like the bassoon, has a double reed. So technically speaking, the highest woodwind instrument is not really the flute, it's the piccolo. And technically speaking, the lowest woodwind instrument is not really the bassoon, it's the double bassoon or the contra bassoon. So I hope that's given you some useful background on the wind family. And then we just, just want to spend a few moments thinking about percussion instruments. And really, percussion instruments fall into two categories. So here's the percussion. And in the percussion family, we have instruments that can produce notes of what we call definite pitch. And we have other percussion instruments that really produce indefinite pitch. Now, what do I mean by that? It basically means if you can play a percussion instrument that actually produces a note, then that's an instrument of definite pitch. An example of that would be the timpani, sometimes known as the kettle drums. And you've probably heard them in the orchestra play things like this. and they just, there are two timpani or maybe three timpani, but they're playing notes of definite pitch. Instruments like the xylophone or the glockenspiel or the vibraphone, they're all instruments that have something that just looks like a keyboard really, but it's, it's playing notes of definite pitch. So all those things would be in this column. The indefinite pitch are things like the bass drum, you know, you just give it a thump and it, it produces a sound, but you can't really say that it's an F or an A flat. It's an indefinite pitch. The triangle, you know, when you hit the triangle, it just goes ding, um, but you can't really tell what note it is. The castanets, um, the tambourine, all these instruments are percussion instruments of indefinite pitch. So I hope that provides a useful introduction to instruments of the orchestra and just gives you the lie of the land as to the standard orchestral instruments, tells you a little bit about clefs that are being used, tells you a little bit about uh, which are the transposing instruments and which are the instruments that are non-transposing, in other words, the instruments that play at what we call concert pitch. And you just get the lie of the land as to how that woodwind family works with its partners as well. So I hope that's helpful in just understanding your way around the orchestra.